Well, thank you for this opportunity for me to present some of our findings that were recently published in Biomarker Insights. Um, I want to first take you through the background of our study and the two platforms that we utilized, and then um, also discuss the findings of our study. So our study was part of a uh, larger ongoing study to evaluate immunotherapies for malignant brain tumors. Doctors Dunn and Johans are studying the immune response in malignant brain tumors in an effort to identify immunotherapies that will most likely be successful. But historically, glioblastoma multiforma um, is the most common primary brain malignancy, and it always recurs after surgical resection and the patients tend to respond poorly to checkpoint blockades. Brain metastasis is a secondary um, tumor that's most frequently derived from lung, breast, and melanoma primary tumors. They present as um, multifocal masses on an MRI as depicted here. And interestingly, uh, some of the tumors have responded well to immunotherapy. So these differences suggest that the immune-mediated response may be different between glioblastoma and brain metastasis. And currently, there are no blood biomarkers that are available to distinguish the types of brain tumors. The doctors Dunn and Johans hypothesize that the tumor releases antigen that transits to the cervical lymph node, where the dendritic cells process and prime the T cells. Chemokine signals thereby recruit the activated T cells to the tumor microenvironment, where they hopefully will kill the tumor cells. But in glioblastoma, there's evidence that the upregulation of PD1 on T cells and PDL1 on tumor cells induces a CD8 T cell exhaustion, thereby reducing the anti tumor responses. So they approached our core with the idea to screen patient plasmas for. T cell cytokines such as Th1, Th2, Th17, and trafficking mar markers such as uh, uh, GMCSF, IL8, MIP1 alpha, and MIP1 beta, and then uh, secreted myeloid markers such as IL1 beta, IL6, and IL12. In a smaller earlier study of glioblastoma patients only, um, we had run a mesoscale discovery 30 plex B plex assay, but we found that there were very few samples that were within the detection range for many of the analytes, and this was disconcerting, and I felt that a different platform might be warranted in order to rightfully investigate the blood biomarkers. So our study consisted of 27 glioblastoma subjects, age, ranging in the ages of 25 to 82 years of age, and we had 17 brain metastasis patients, ranging in age from 31 to 81 years of age, and 11 healthy control sam plasma samples that were purchased from a commercial vendor. Uh, I just want to point out that we did have five brain metastasis patients that had prior treatment and four glioblastoma patients that had had prior treatment. The patient plasmas were um, sampled at the time of the diagnosis or just prior to their surgery. The platforms that we chose to study were the mesoscale discovery VPLEX assays and the milliplex luminex bead-based high-sensitivity 21-plex. The MSD platform utilizes a high-binding carbon planar electrode plate that can bind 10 times more antibody than a traditional polystyrene plate, and it utilizes a rubidium-labeled detection antibody with an enhancer reagent to generate an electrode-pulse chemically activated light emission that is captured by a high-grade CCD camera. The MSD plate provides a high sensitivity and a wide dynamic range without the need for machine calibration or cleaning. The Luminex assay utilizes a unique color-coded magnetic bead, which is coupled to a capture antibody. The beads are then mixed together, and um, they have the capability of measuring over 100 different unique analytes per well. A biotinylated detection antibody is then bound to a streptavidin PE prior to detection using a FlexMap 3D Luminex instrument. A red laser is used to excite the bead and a green laser excites the PE label. So the, the signal is then sorted for each bead color and a mean fluorescent intensity of 50 beads per analyte is compared 
using a single standard curve. FlexMat 3D is a modified flow cytometer that requires routine calibration and performance verification. It operates a fluidic system that does require sheath fluid, and occasionally it does require a clog removal. So the Luminex system also provides a high sensitivity and wide dynamic range. The illustration on the left is of the mesoscale Discoverer MSD VPlex assay that requires three plates having wells printed with either three, eight, or 10 capture antibodies in order to uh, assess all 21 analytes. So the plates are lyophilized, so you just need to add your diluted sample or your standard and start incubating on an orbital shaker. On the right is the, Lumen is the bead region map for the uh, Luminex XMAP platform. Um, the, it requires one standard black walled 96 well plate in which all 21 beads or analytes uh, can be mixed together in a liquid suspension. So one well has the potential to hold 100 or more different analytes. The user just needs to add the sample, an assay buffer, and the premixed beads, and then begin the incubation on an orbital shaker. Since we chose to run the assays according to the recommended incubation times, we were able to run the platforms in parallel because we were able to set up the milliplex assay during the first mesoscale uh, two-hour incubation period. The Luminex assay was incubated overnight at four degrees. And we thought that you know, while we were running these assays in parallel, we could get an idea of the labor cost for our, our course pricing. And we had a private uh, company that was hired to perform a time and motion study to assess how much time and effort was required for each platform. Our time and motion study revealed that more labor is required for the MSD platform here shown in blue. The MSD platform had an increased hands-on labor time, which really reflects the time needed to prepare three plates and three separate standards, which is roughly an extra hour. We also compared the dynamic ranges for the 19 shared analytes in order to assess the sensitivity differences between the platforms. We extended the standard curves and we added extra blanks in order to evaluate the limits of quantitation. We found the MSD platform, here shown in the blue bars, had a greater lower limit of quantitation for 17 of the 19 analytes, whereas the Luminex uh, platform, shown in the red bars, had a higher upper limit of quantitation for 17 of the 19 analytes. Overall, we found that the dynamic range was larger for the MSD platform. So we expected that a platform having a higher sensitivity and dynamic range overall should yield more biological data. We know that the tumor microenvironment is a complex mixture of immune cells and tumor cells, and that each contribute to either proliferation of the tumor or its eradication. So the tumor can modulate the, the tissue environment such that the T cells and myeloid cells might be recruited to the site, such as the brain, and elicit their cytotoxic activity. Or the, the tumor can produce proteins that block signals and promote immune cell suppression, so thereby allowing tumor growth. We would expect to find that the increased levels of, of some of these cytokines would be in the plasma of the tumor-bearing patients. Our results from the Luminex study suggest that there are many slightly elevated cytokines and chem chemokines present in the tumor-bearing patients and that when compared to the healthy in individuals. So some of these analytes in red appear to be unique to their study group. In comparison, the MSD platform only detected five analytes that were significantly elevated in tumor burden patients. And this seems strange for a platform that was having a higher sensitivity, we would expect, uh, we wouldn't expect such few uh, biomarkers. Again, um, I noted in red that those analytes that were unique to this study groups that were elevated um, uniquely to either glioblastoma or brain metastasis patients. When we evaluated the percent of samples that were within the limits of quantitation, we found that a majority of the MSD analytes were actually not quantifiable. In particular, IL-2, IL-4, IL-5, IL-21 and IL-23 had less than 50% of the samples with measurable values. So this is 
um, concerning because the statistics for the Luminex assay indicated that there were um, differences that existed in our tumor burden patients versus our healthy control population. And these were differences in analytes that we hypothesized might be important in the brain tumor microenvironment. We also have insight into which factors might be important because we did whole exome sequencing of the tumor biopsies of all of our study patients. This heat map illustrates that we found signatures of activated T cells and exhausted T cells, signatures of macrophages and signatures of NK cells present in both the tumors of brain metastasis and tumors of glioblastoma patients. So based on these signatures, we hypothesized that Th1, Th2, and Th17 cytokines and chemokines would be found in the blood of glioblastoma and brain metastasis patients compared to healthy persons, and that this would reflect the T cell activation and the NK cell recruitment and the macrophage recruitment um, as, as we would expect based on our tumors. So based on the literature, um, I've listed many of the cytokines that we expect that would be elevated in the tumor patient populations. Those cytokines bolded um, are found to be significantly elevated in our tumor in our tumor burdened patients using the Luminex assay. Those in blue were found to be significantly elevated using the MSD platform. And those that are bolded and blue indicate that both platforms detected uh, significant differences. I just want to note that MIP3-alpha or CCL20 has a known role in solid tumor um, uh, metastasis and in glioblastoma. The tumor RNA-seq data um, uh, indicated that there was a signature of activated and exhausted T cells present in both the brain metastasis and the glioblastoma tumors, and thus we would expect to have a high MIP3-alpha along with circulate, higher circulating levels of GMCSF and MIP1-alpha for myeloid cell recruitment in our tumor patients. So in summary, we found that both platforms identified biomarkers that were altered in tumor burden groups, but the Luminex platform was able to quantify 100% of the samples. This is figure three from our paper, and it illustrates the comparisons of all the 19 shared analytes. The blue dots are the picogram per mil concentrations as determined by the MSD platform, whereas the red dots are picogram mil per mil concentrations determined by the Luminex assay. Being that this is um, rather small to read, I summarized the data in, in this chart. So most important to note is that all of the Luminex data reflected an increased level of these particular cytokines in tumor-bearing patient plasmas. And it supports studies by other groups, including the hypothesis hypothesis that the tumor microenvironment recruits and modulates immune cells. So our study is too small to determine diagnostic biomarkers for glioblastoma and brain metastasis, but it highlights that the platform differences can impact how we interpret the data. So the MSD platform identified six analytes that I've shown here in red that were increased in healthy control plasmas, causing some confusion in our interpretation of the results and questioning really the meaningfulness of the platform in, in a complex matrix of human plasma. With that said, I would like to thank all of those who assisted on our study, and I would then like to open up the question and answer session.